like the users. Everyone wants to say the users are stupid, humans are stupid. No, people are just not educated. That's the issue. Just like this uneducated network administrator who put his diagram on ratemynetworkdiagram.com. <laughs> he actually put, when he submitted it, IP address and other miscellaneous information has been removed. My supervisors would uh, feel quite unhappy with me if I uh, posted the full version. Even though I did post a full version of SDS network uh, diagram for the Encore Building Synergy Business Park with also the devices that I'm actually using. Yeah, they're not going to get mad about that being shown at DEF CON, I'm sure. Um, now, now this, this next slide, I am totally not BSing you on this one because I honestly did not believe it myself. Is an, I had to Google the company because I did not believe this was real. I pinged the IP address to see it. I did DNS stuff, you know, uh, IP lookup on it. This is the actual external IP address of the companies and there's their internal IP addresses and there are some of the different firewalls that they're using, the names of the, the version of the firewall and their website server and they're telling us all the internal and external IP addresses. Ouch. That's also what we call jackpot. <laughs> okay. That wasn't a user. That was an IT uh, network guy, soon to be an unemployed network IT guy. Uh, it's, hey, it's freely accessible on ratemynetworkdiagram.com, which has got to be one of the best social engineering network uh, resources that I've ever had. Okay. Yes, yeah, that was the same place. Yes. Yeah. Oh, just goes. And, and please, guys, I don't want y'all to be malicious. Please rate their diagram. I mean, be fair. <laughs> All right. Anyway, so, 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 so make sure you do that. Now let's go to one of the other stratagems. This is the uh, stratagem is to scheme with beauties. And basically it's going to be talking about how we're dealing with online versus in real life social engineering engagements and the problems people with a voice like mine have. Yes, not just visual but audio. So as we talked in uh, previous stratagems, being able to fool someone online is pretty easy. Um, when you get to the point where you're dealing with um, calling a person in real life, that's when it gets a little bit more difficult. Uh, because it's one thing to be able to say, hi, I'm Kathy on Facebook and be able to exchange emails. It's another thing when you need to talk to the person in real life and tell them that you're Kathy. It's like, so how are you going to do that? It's very simple. You need to be able to change your voice in a way that will make the person make it sound more believable. And it helps if you have background noise unlike where I'm trying to do it in a very quiet situation. Uh, but you want to be able to make it where it's convincing, where it sounds like, oh, I am Kathy. It's like I do need help with that password. Uh, could you help me out, please? Uh, so that's one of the main things when you're dealing with um, doing social engineering. In real life, you're going to want to have the ability to be able to change your voice or have someone, an employee that, you, that can impersonate a female or be a female uh, or an older person or the, the target that you're trying to choose. Uh, it's like if you want to go after someone that's an executive, uh, the World of Warcraft headset's really good with uh, being an old person, uh, maybe a little bit too convincing because I don't know if you're going to be, if you're going to be this old to sound like this, that's how I'm supposed to be working. Uh, you could maybe pull off as the owner of the company or uh, the CEO or, or something like that. Maybe a little but, too old. Uh, that's about the closest thing you're going to get to an old person. So with the, uh, the wild headset, I usually just stick with the, uh, with the female. Because that sounds like the most convincing uh, without hardly any tweaking at all on the, uh, on the settings. So... Hopefully you, uh, you like that. It's like, uh, hopefully this helps uh, show you some of the, the uh, things. And this is just one headset with preset uh, voices. Uh, I mean, and trust me, all the other sets, uh, all the other uh, voices aren't as um, convincing as this one. Uh, I don't think anybody's going to take me seriously if I try to ask for a password reset like this. And I don't think you're going to be able to get anything from someone if you tell them uh, straight up, you know. Just give me your password now. Yeah. I don't 
think that's going to work. So um, you, you want it to be creative. It's like uh, there's other voice changers out there. Uh, this is just one, and it's just happened. To, it was just a find, and that's one of the things I liked about it. Um, it was just uh, by accident that says, oh, this could be used for social engineering. It's like uh, there's other devices that I'm sure are much more sophisticated that do the same thing. So please remember, it's like if it's on uh, line and stuff, you know, you, you, you can't trust uh, who you're talking to online. Um, one of the things I said in my book, you know, it's like uh, guys are guys, girls are guys, and 14 year olds are FBI agents. That's the internet. Um, but also now, and more and more, you'll see in real life, you can't trust the other person on the other end of the phone line uh, for the same reason. And there we go. Let's go on this. Thank you. Let's go to our next stratagem. I'm, I'm like so over time right now, they're going to be dragging me off in about 10 minutes. Um, our next stratagem is luring a tiger from its lair in the mountain. You wait for the worker to take his network to you. Uh, I don't know about it. anybody else who likes to go to jail and explain to Bubba and stuff, you know, just murder his family that you're in there because of a computer crime. <laughs> yeah, that's not going to end well for you at all, ever, okay? So you want to make sure that you can limit your risk, and one of the best ways to do that is not get caught and not be getting caught in the main headquarters. So where do you go? You go within a two-mile radius of the major Starbucks, Panera Bread, you know, place, where you can actually do, um, still access their network. And how do you do that? Through their laptop. It's like being able to use and mimic an, an access point. Thank you, Microsoft, for making sure that everybody begins out, hey, are you there, are you there, are you there, are you there? And I'm always going, yes, I am, yes, I am, yes, I am. Please join me. I'm there for you. It's like uh, we're not going to cuddle, but it's like uh, it'll be beneficial for at least one of us. Uh, so, so, so that's one of the kinds of attacks that you can do. Uh, this is another way to do it. Uh, uh, my uh, friend of mine and, and co-author of the book, uh, Kent Neighbors, actually took this picture at a Panera Bread outside of where he was, uh, uh, was uh, staying, right outside of the main co uh, company headquarters area. This lady left her laptop, her purse, and her latte. It's like for over 15 minutes, unattended. I'm not going to try to install malware. I'm not going to try to hijack her session. I'm not going to try to do some kind of cool, leap middle in the man, man in the middle attack. I'm taking her laptop, I'm putting it into her purse, and I'm malicious. I'll take her, her coffee too. It's like, a, <laughs> and then I'm walking away and gathering the data. Yeah, they're going to come after me. Um, so that's one of the problems with, when we're talking about wireless security. It's just physical and, and also uh, from the network base. Now let's go and talk with tossing out a brick to get a jade. It's like, uh, which one is the scariest picture in there? Out of all those pictures, which is the scariest? It's the middle one, because that's the one you're going to put in your computer. And I like USB drives, and I like personal devices. This is a picture of me right there, again, and trust me, it's not that I like that picture, uh, believe me. But guess what I'm wearing under that nice suit? That's my best of doom. I call it the best of doom because I think it sounds cool and I'm reliving my childhood. But it's like that's the name and I'm keeping it, okay? Uh, what can I do in the be uh, best of doom? Well, here's the part where we come to the hacker striptease. Yeah, it goes bum, chicka, bum, bum. Baby, come to my mind. Here's where you throw money. Okay. So you throw money in row days. It's all good. So here's the best of doom. Let's go and see what we've got in here. We've got a couple of uh, drives here that are really nice. They've got uh, their sand cruiser. Thank you, sand cruiser, for giving us an environment to manipulate. So we can suck down the system hash and the, and the uh, password hashes of a system just by plugging it in for five seconds and then going off to the next machine. Those are really good. Very handy. Let's just empty pockets here. Oh, these are really nice. I dropped these. I don't drop these in parking lots. People drop these in parking lots with malware on them. No, I put them in an envelope, address it to uh, someone in the company, and then put it on their desk when I'm in there. What are they going to do? They're going to plug it in and they're going to double click on that pay raise uh, for 2011. Right? Just to, see, just to make sure they're supposed to be the one to get it and stuff, you know. They want to make sure they're returning to the rightful owner, right? So let's see what else we got. 
oh, these are really good because no one ever notices these when they're logging your keystrokes and stuff, you know, behind your computer. Those are really nice. Sometimes it's like you can't have time, you got some time, you got some time on your hands, it's like you're there at night and stuff. You don't want to uh, go and decrypt the passwords there. You don't want to try to be on the location. That's okay. I take the hard drive with me and I do that later. Sometimes I want the system to still be on but I still want to be able to attack it and stuff so nice little USB uh, wireless devices I can connect and bridge and then I'm just, you know, hacking from the convenience of my car, jamming out. It's got air conditioning, it's good. And let's see here. Um, also, if I want to record a phone conversation, try to manipulate or actually just leave one at someone's desk while they're talking, try to get some incriminating evidence there. Um, if I want to do forensics on the machine, that always helps uh, to have something uh, available for that. Let's see. Button, button. Who's got the button? Here we go. Network uh, crossover cable. If I, if you have USB rights and you think, oh, we're protected because we're we're protecting USB rights, I'll I'll just join the network directly to the other machine and then uh, download the files that way. And then here we've got um, some hard drives. I like this because this is the rainbow tables, so I can do some password crafting right there. Uh, don't worry, I do have a permit. It's all good. Uh, here's just loaded with uh, malware. This is just uh, all different kinds because I might want to, you know, get a custom one out there on, on the network so I get to choose. Um, and I want to be able to compromise and take that data. So it's like I always carry at least, you know, one or two terabyte hard drives with me that are the same size because you want to be able to back up the data. What am I going to manipulate with that? How am I going to manipulate all that data? How am I going to crack? How am I going to do that? Wire? Well, I do it this way. This helps. 40 gig hard drive, 1 gigahertz processor, 1 gig of RAM, running Backtrack 4. Thank you, Teton, who helped me out with that. It's like uh, just plug that in right here. Network jack. I'm good to go. I'm doing a wiretap on your network, backing it up to a one terabyte hard drive. I can get some password hashes off of that, I think. Especially if it's duct tape underneath a desk. <laughs> Here's another one because uh, this is one of my newer toys. It's like uh, this is not mine, of course. Someone else uh, used this one to jailbreak. It's like the reason why I like this because Metasploit, thank you HD, who was able actually to, I was actually on an engagement breaking into a network gateway and from here. So everybody's walking past me and I'm just like, you know, trying to get into the, trying to guess the uh, password to an SSA channel and the manager actually comes up to me, so how are you liking your state? Oh, I'm loving it. I'm having a great time. It's like, is that the new iPad? Like, yes. It's like it does a lot of a lot of cool things and closed out that. Showed him the pictures. Showed him the videos. Didn't show him me breaking his network. And uh, it was all nice and fun on that. So those are some of the things that you can get. And those are some of the things that are available. It's like it's just that easy to to, to bring into it. I actually brought that into a secured location one time, which now I'm banned from, uh, because they don't like people carrying small little USB devices on their person. This is my favorite. 8 gigs right here. It's like uh, that goes through security uh, checkpoints everywhere in every country and it's got a nice, okay, don't hurt me. Okay, uh, I'm running along as I'm talking, can I talk any faster? I don't think so but I'm trying. So, uh, so there's a nice little 8 gig uh, USB drive for that. So let's talk about uh, the next one. Usually after I tell all the people of the things I can do, I want to get out of there. Um, so that's the uh, stratagem of escape. It's the best scheme. It's like you do that, how do you escape? Fake engagement letters. Those are my favorite. It's like I actually was uh, caught inside a dumpster in Houston. A lot of my stories end up with me in a dumpster. But, uh, but this one was I was stopped by uh, HPD and they were, wanted to question me at gunpoint about what I was doing there. I showed them the engagement letter, the, the one that I had, it was a legitimate one, and they looked at it and gave it back to me. They didn't call, they didn't verify anything. So now I carry two engagement letters. One's the real one and the one that's fake that actually tells them please assist them in any way, shape or can, uh, that you can and make sure you call his phone number and stuff, you know, and verify that he's supposed to be there. Which, you know, they've never called me. So it's like I've just been wasting those go plans. But, uh, but, but that's what you can do. That's how you do it. It's like, and I love it when they do help me. It's like, yeah, here's the engagement. Like, can you help me? Uh, I need to take that server out. It's like, uh, this isn't the, you're supposed to help me. Like, you, don't worry, I'll put your name on the report. It's like, uh, you're doing a good job. I really appreciate it. And you did a great job catching me. And I don't, like I said, I try not to lie. I, I do put them on the report. And uh, so that is, uh, that's one of the best schemes. It's like using those uh, engagement letters. Now, what we're going to talk about is how we try to solve this in the next two minutes. <laughs> It's like uh, we try to do it by security awareness but we're doing security awareness wrong in most companies. Look at this top security awareness poster from a company. 
So great, now you have insecure employees that have low self-esteem. <laughs> That's not the way